Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about um, another MOSFET current mirror, which is the Wilson current mirror. And we already saw this current mirror uh, for the case of the BJT transistor as well. So it is the exact same configuration uh, where we have our reference current IREF, which could be implemented in different ways. For example, just simply a resistor. Uh, and then we have uh, M1 and M2, M1 being a diode connected transistor, uh, M2 being a mirror, the mirror transistor. Um, basically M1 and M2 are going to have mirroring currents because they share the same VGS voltage. Uh, and then we have an M3 transistor. Uh, and the output current is the current flowing through uh, M3. Um, several things to notice is, as I mentioned, uh, M1 and M2 are sharing the VGS voltage. And so if they both have the same VGS voltage, they are both going to have the same uh, current, same idea as current. Um, the two things that we want to know about this new current mirror are the current transfer ratio, which will give us an idea of the accuracy of the current source, meaning how close the output current is to the reference current, as well as the output resistance. Uh, in terms of the ratio of I out to I ref, in this case we will notice that um, for transistors of the same size, um, in, in this case, in the case of the MOSFET, um, we won't have any beta errors being introduced as we had in the case of the PJT, because in this case the current flowing through the gate is actually equal to zero, and so that means that uh, the current flowing through this branch is equal to zero. Right, so maybe I should say current equal to zero. As well as the current flowing um, into the gate of Q M3 is equal to zero. Um, and what that implies is that, uh, in essence, my I out current that is flowing through M3 is equal to my ID1 current flowing through M1, since there is no current going into the gates of M1 and M2. Um, and then since M1 and M2 have the same VGS voltage, then that current ID1 is equal to ID2, uh, which again is equal to IREF because the current going into the gate of M3 is equal to zero, and so all of IREF uh, keeps flowing to, in the direction towards the drain of M2. And therefore, um, in the case of the of the BJT, if you remember, in the BJT Wilson mirror, we had that I out over I ref was equal to uh, 1 over 1 plus 2 over beta squared, but in this case, uh, the ratio will be actually perfectly equal to 1, if we don't take into account um, a couple of factors. The first factor is that transistors can have different sizes. Um, and in integrated circuit design, the aspect ratio of the transistors is actually a parameter that we play with to come up with currents that are uh, multiples of, of a particular reference current. And so it will be more accurate to write, instead of just assuming all the transistors are the same size, uh, to write that I out of the ref is equal to uh, the aspect ratio of M1, which is the transistor uh, directly connected to the output transistor, so width over length 1 divided by width over length uh, 2, which is the transistor uh, where IREF or ID2 is flowing. Um, perhaps I should write this so that it is more clear as follows. I out is actually equal to ID1. Oops. Sorry about that. I out is equal to ID1. I ref is equal to ID2. And perhaps then it makes more sense to say this is width over length 1 and width over length 2. Um, since the transistors we are assuming they are well matched, all the other parameters uh, in the calculation of ID1 and ID2 will cancel out. Except um, there is one thing that is not well matched between transistors M1 and M2, and that is the VDS voltage, the voltage from drain to source. 
Why is that? Well, we know that the uh, VDS voltage of M2 needs to be at least one threshold voltage higher than the VDS voltage of M1. And the reason for that is um, the, the drain in transistor 2 is connected to the gate of transistor M3. And uh, for this gate uh, to turn on the transistor, the voltage uh, at the gate of transistor 3 needs to be at least um, the threshold voltage higher than the source of transistor M3. And uh, the source of transistor M3 is connected to the drain of transistor M1. And therefore, we know that um, there is a mismatch. Perhaps I should say note. There is a mismatch in VDS where VDS2 is at least um, greater than or equal to VDS1 plus VT. Okay, so it's a delta of VT between the VDSs. Uh, now, um, if we recall, for the equation of the drain current for a transistor in saturation, VDS doesn't really play a role, right? It's one half of Kn uh, times VGS minus VT squared, the overdrive voltage squared. So there's no VDS. And that is true as long as we are ignoring the channel length modulation effect or ignoring the output resistance. If we want to take into account the, the finite output resistance of the transistor, then we need to um, write the equation for the current in saturation as one half of mu n c oxide width over length Vs minus Vt squared times 1 plus lambda times Vds. Right? And so then if we uh, if we write ID1 over ID2 and we account for different values of Vds um, and different values of aspect ratio, then the ratio of the two will be the ratio of aspect ratios times 1 plus lambda Vds1 divided by 1 plus lambda Vds2. And we can safely assume that the lambdas are equal if the transistors are matched, but because of the way they are connected, the Vds's won't be matched. And so there is what we call a systematic error introduced uh, in, in the fact that uh, by the construction of the circuit, the VDSs are not matched. Okay. Uh, the output resistance for this circuit uh, is improved with respect to the output resistance for the basic mirror. The output resistance for the basic mirror was this little arrow uh, of the output transistor. And in this case, the output resistance is increased by a factor of uh, GM times little arrow. And so the actual output resistance will be uh, GM3 times RL3 times RL1. Uh, so basically, GM3 out of three times better than the basic current mirror. Um, I will not go through the derivation, but you can um, see the derivation in your textbook. Uh, and it's, I wouldn't say it's a straightforward because there are a couple of approximations that need to be made. Uh, but in terms of the process, it's always the same. It's just um, setting up the, the um, uh, small signal model for the different transistors and just proceeding with the circuit analysis. And, uh, and then after a couple of approximations, uh, this is the conclusion for the output resistance. Uh, so, in terms of comparing the performance of this circuit to the basic current mirror, we will see. So, um, performance compared to basic mirror. It will be one um, better uh, uh, current transfer ratio, I would say, or more accurate current transfer ratio ratio due to no beta related errors. That is, the current into the gate of the transistor is equal to zero. Um, and in terms of R out, R out improved by a factor of GM3 RO3. Um, limitations of this circuit 
if we want to call them that way. And the main limitation would be um, the systematic error. introduced by a mismatch in BDSs in BDS between M1 and M2 of at least VT. Now there is um, uh, a fix for this limitation if you will uh, and there is a modified uh, Wilson current mirror. And so, and the way it is modified is precisely just trying to get rid of the systematic error, trying to get rid of the need uh, for the additional, um, uh, for the additional term. So the modified Wilson MOS mirror, or MOS Wilson mirror, uh, basically introduces another transistor on the other side to try and balance both sides. And so it looks like the same thing, VDD, still with the IREF. But again, introducing another diode-connected transistor on the left side of the circuit. That's my output there. Something that looks uh, similar to a cast code, excepting a cast code, you have the diode connected transistors uh, on the same side of the circuit, whereas in the Wilson, they're on opposite sides of the circuit. Um, so this would be just to keep things consistent. This will be my I out, M1, M2, M3, and this is the new transistor we have introduced, M4, um, to basically balance the two branches of the circuit. And so, um, advantage of this circuit is that it balances uh, the two branches of the mirror to avoid systematic error. introduced by uh, differences in VDS. Notice that in this case, uh, the drain of M2 is not connected to the gate of M3. And so there is no need for the delta, um, for the delta in VDS. These two transistors, now M1 and M2, can see that the same VDS value um, and the circuit can still be operating as intended. And uh, so that's it for the Wilson current mirror. Uh, one of the other limitations, if you will, or disadvantages with respect to the uh, standard, the basic MOSFET mirror, uh, obviously, is that now you have two transistors in the path to the output and you need to keep both of them in saturation. And so um, it basically limits uh, your range of output voltages or the compliance of your current source in that uh, the minimum voltage that you need to have at your output now for the circuit to be operating properly is two VOVs, two overdrive voltages, uh, because you need both M1 and M3 to be in saturation. Okay. Um, and so perhaps that's another limitation. Uh, or I should say perhaps another performance note as compared to the, to the basic mirror. I'm going to draw a little line here, but actually I'm just going to get rid of this equation. And right here, this other limitation or this other um, difference in performance is that um, lower compliance, meaning uh, V out min is equal to two times VOV. And obviously V out will be the voltage at the output node right there. All right, and we're ready to move on to the next type of current mirror.
Thank you.